$2,500. Also, if portability is your main concern, you don't need super duper computing power. You're, you're okay with this display. It's not a bad display on the Air. The Air is still a good pick. It certainly cuts the thinner profile from the front. You can see the difference right here. Because the MacBook Air tapers, it's super duper skinny, right? Oh, it tapers to almost nothing. Whereas our 13 inch MacBook Pro is the usual Mac design that is the same thickness all around, very uniform. But as we turn to the side, you see that when we get to the back, you're looking at about the same thickness on both machines right there. They hide it really well with the air. They do a taper from the bottom. So right at the edges here, it tapers in. It's a little bit thicker right where the feet are though. So they're concealing the thickness pretty nicely there. Still, it is thinner. You can feel the difference when you're carrying it. If you slip it into a bag, it gives you that much extra space for other stuff in this section of your bag right here. And the half a pound difference, surprisingly, I, you, you can feel it. I thought, well, you know, what's a half a pound? Some Ultrabooks actually are three and a half pounds, just like our new 13-inch MacBook Pro down bottom. But you pick this up, it still feels pretty amazingly light. You pick up the 13-inch MacBook Pro, and it feels... Well, lighter than expected probably among laptops, but still a little bit weightier. The footprint is actually a little bit bigger on our MacBook Air. It overhangs a little bit here. Interesting, who would expect that? Also on the front, it's overhanging both directions. So smaller footprint actually goes to the Pro. In terms of ports, Apple is pretty consistent with that, but there are some differences here. Both of these have SD card slots. We have full-size HDMI port over here on our MacBook Pro 13-inch. Right here we have USB 3.0 port on both of these, and there is our Thunderbolt port right over here on this one. This is the original Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt 10 gig per second port. We turn them around on the other side. Both of these have MagSafe 2 connectors, and this is where our display slash Thunderbolt ports are here, and you get two Thunderbolt 2 ports on this versus a single Thunderbolt 1 port on your MacBook Air. So a difference there for those of you who are actually going to use a lot of Thunderbolt peripherals or are hoping for even more speed. Right now, I don't think there's many applications that require that. There aren't a lot of people using really fast Thunderbolt raids because they're so prohibitively expensive, but in the future, it could possibly be an issue. Headphone jack for both of them, 3.5 millimeter combo audio jack. USB 3.0 port again on both of these. So same ports except for you get more Thunderbolt ports and you get the 2.0 on the 13 inch model. And then there's that HDMI port. There is no HDMI port on our Air. You can use a Thunderbolt 2 HDMI adapter if you need that on the Air. And so you can see the thickness from the back view where MacBook Air is at its thickest looking pretty similar there. Both of them have the same aluminum unibody design, high quality, the little light up Apple logo that comes from the backlighting on the display. Both of these have 802.11 AC Wi-Fi dual band Bluetooth 4.0. You get the same wireless networking airport as is called in the world of Apple inside. Both have large glass trackpads. Super duper wonderful as long as you're using Mac OS. It's really just hard to beat that experience there. It works very responsibly. I always recommend if you want to run Windows pretty much full time boot camp into it, you should get a Windows machine instead because Apple's Windows drivers are not top notch for things like battery life, even display drivers. You know, you're at the whim of the basic Intel stuff, that kind of thing. As we open up again, well, they look pretty similar because they are both Mac laptops. After all, the Air obviously has a silver surround around the display. Both of these have glossy displays. Both of these have backlit keyboards. Excellent keyboards, a little more key travel on our 13-inch MacBook Pro because while it's a thicker machine, there is room for more key travel. So I give a slight preference to that keyboard, but they're both really very good. Trackpad experience, identical on these. Both of these have the little cutout notch to make it easier to lift up the lid without struggling too much. Both of these have FaceTime HD 720p cameras on the front. So even ground there. OS 10 on both of these. Obviously, the, the new 13-inch Retina MacBook Pro ships with Mavericks, which is the latest OS, and with the MacBook Air, it's a free download to do that. So it ships with Mountain Lion on it, but now that Apple doesn't charge for OS upgrades, we're talking parity here once again. Both of these machines start out at 4 gigs of RAM for the base model. With our MacBook Air, you're looking at a 1.3 gigahertz ULV Haswell CPU. That's an Ultrabook CPU, so lower power, 15 watt, versus the 28 watt CPU that's in our 13 inch MacBook Pro. That's clocked for the base model at 2.4 gigahertz. Dual core on both fronts. You get a lot, lot, lot more processing power in the full mobile CPU, the 24. 
28 watt CPU there. The thing is, a lot of people actually don't need that much processing power. If you're doing Word, Excel, PowerPoint, social networking, playing full 1080p videos, even doing some Photoshop work, that kind of thing, then honestly, the ULV CPU can handle all that just fine. You don't need all that horsepower. It's for you people who are running development environments. You're, you're creating software, for example. You're designing websites, and you've got a bunch of different design and creation tools running at once. You're editing full HD video. That's where you're going to want the full mobile CPU that's in the 13-inch MacBook Pro. So I know a lot of people say, wow, for $200 more, I get so much more computing power. More has to be better, right? It can be overkill, too. And the drawback is lesser battery life. We all know the 13-inch MacBook Air is the all-time leader for battery life so far among Ultrabooks, and it can go 11 hours on a charge, whereas you're talking 8.5 or 9 hours on the 13-inch MacBook Pro with Retina display. That is still a lot, a lot of battery power, more than you're going to see on most notebooks, but there is a difference for those of you who need that much stamina. Both of these come with solid state storage and they start with 128 gig SSDs inside. You can upgrade those on Apple's website. You can build to order. You can go with higher end configurations that also increase the RAM. You can go up to 8 gigs on our MacBook Air. You can go up to 16 gigs on our MacBook Pro as long as you want to spend the money. Now, one thing I will say, the only complaint I have about the MacBook Air 13 inch with Haswell is the base model has that 1.3 gigahertz. Haswell dual core CPU, where other competing Ultrabooks have a 1.6 gigahertz. Granted, it gets some brownie points for having Intel HD 5000 integrated graphics instead of 4400, but that low clock speed just kind of worries me for those of you who are looking for future proof in this. And I've been suggesting going with the i7 for a couple hundred dollars more. And that is putting you in the pricing territory of our 13 inch MacBook Pro, then again, isn't it? Which has super duper more horse, horsepower than even the 1.7 gigahertz. ULV CPU in our MacBook Air. The other big difference here is the display. Now, this has an IPS panel, Retina display, 2560 by 1600, super duper sharp, beautiful, clear. MacBook Air does not use an IPS panel, but even still, you, there are levels to IPS displays and TN panels like, and this has got to be the nicest TN panel you'll ever see. The, the, the viewing angles are not too bad. You were going to pick up glare on either of these because they're glossy, but you see how far I'm turning that? It's not really disappearing, is it? Well, let's see if I can do the same thing here. And so you can see, you're, you're not suffering viewing angles on the MacBook Air at all. Where you are potentially suffering if you want to call it that is the resolution 1440 by 900 well it's fine it's not bad it's not super duper great things are readable things are pretty sharp i think most people will enjoy this display but this is just crazy sharp and beautiful now the strange thing is with mac os it handles display scaling well but a little bit weird so right here if we choose the best for retina scaling, which is what it's on right now, it's going to run at basically like 1280 by 800, which is a lower functioning res functional resolution than we have in our MacBook Air, even though they're both 13 inches. Me, personally, I would just change that and go up to a higher resolution, and you're still going to get nice, sharp graphics and stuff, too. So let's take a look at that. And instead of choosing best for display, we're going to go with a scaled resolution, and we're going to go up to 1440 by 900 to get them pretty much closer to similar. And you can go even higher if you want right here. If we choose this, you can see that you can get the resolution all the way up to 1680 by 1050 which I think looks absolutely super stunning. And it's very versatile, too. If you're using an application that has lots of palettes that take up space like Photoshop, then running at that resolution is still quite readable. But right now we're going to leave them matching resolution so you can get an idea of what they look like, comparably speaking. And you're just going to get sharper text and more stunning graphics, especially if you've got some high-quality graphics to look at, too. You can see the difference on them. So now we have them both running at the same functional 1440 by 900 resolution, the same desktop pattern provided with every Mac, the cute zebras here. S maximum brightness is set on both displays They're at the same angle to the camera at the moment. And if, if you give it a good look, you can see the colors are more vibrant here. We have um, we got full uh, sRGB coverage here and a good coverage of Adobe RGB. This does not have as wide a color gamut. So you're going to get more vibrant, more zingy colors of more variety of colors. You're going to get sharpness and contrasts that are actually going to be better on that. So that leads to the next thing. Maybe you're, you don't need the horsepower. You're just tempted by having a way better display for $200. I can understand that. If you don't mind the extra half pound of weight, I think I would jump on that higher resolution display myself. Really, Apple has done the best job of upsell here, haven't they, right? You, you're all set on your MacBook Air. You love it, and you think, 
Oh, but now for only $200 more, look how much I get. Uh-huh. Clever company, Apple. And now for video playback, I mean, both of these can handle HD video and full HD video, no problem whatsoever. But first interesting thing, notice the difference in the blues here. The the 13 inch is actually more color accurate, the 13 inch MacBook Pro. So those blues are actually more true, but both of these are gonna look pleasing. And we're gonna do this one at a time so you can hear the speakers, which on both counts are actually very good. First, we'll go with our MacBook Air. We're at 50% volume. This is Lisa from Mobile Tech View. Today we're going to look at what's going to be one of the hotter notebooks probably for the year. This is the late 2013 edition MacBook Pro 13. And we're running both of these at 720p since that fits the native resolution of this display quite fine and the scaled resolution of this. And now let's listen to the speakers and look at the video on this one. We're talking about just about the same audio quality there. So there you have it. A little bit brighter. Certainly this is a brighter display on our 13-inch Pro machine versus this one right here. Both of them look pretty nice, don't they? So honestly, if you, if you want a Mac, you're not going to go wrong with either of these. These are both very nice machines. Both of these can run Photoshop just fine, even with 4 gigs of RAM, Mac OS, especially now with the compressed memory that we have in Mavericks, handles that quite well. But you can upgrade the memory on either of these when you order it. Neither of these has upgradable memory. It's soldered on board. So once you order it, that's what you got for the rest of your life there. Choose wisely. SSD drives are socketed. PCIe over here, a little bit hard to find those. Neither of these machines is a joy to open up, getting the battery out, not too much fun. So... Uh, like a lot of ultrabooks only, maybe even a little bit worse when it comes to things like battery removal. You know, you don't really want to tinker with these. Order it the way you want, it's my suggestion. But anyway, can handle Photoshop, can handle Illustrator, can handle Dreamweaver just fine, can handle MS Office, your email, all of that stuff, your full HD video playback. In that respect, both very competent. And again, just if you have higher computing needs, the MacBook Pro would be the better choice because it has the faster CPU, and that means for those of you who are doing killer serious computing work, you got spreadsheets with 10,000 rows and you're doing calculations on that. You're doing full HD video editing frequently, perhaps for work, that kind of thing. You know, although even then, I might be tempted to get the 15-inch with dedicated graphics, but that's $2,700. Ow. And again, there's the portability factor. Thinner, lighter with our MacBook Air, and you save $200. For those of you who like to game, and um, I'm talking about primarily under Mac OS because we, we've got the best optimized graphic drivers there. You could put Windows on here. Neither of these has dedicated graphics, so you're not looking at something that I would call a gaming laptop, but certainly the 13-inch MacBook Pro with Retina display, our slightly thicker friend over here, is going to be the better performance choice because we have Intel Iris HD 5100 graphics. That's a more powerful integrated GPU versus HD 5000 graphics, which is usually coupled with Ultrabooks in our MacBook Air. Now, that's still one of the more capable for Ultrabook integrated graphics with Haswell's that you're going to find. Uh, both of these, you know, you could play Diablo 3 on low settings, but you could actually go up to medium settings and full HD resolution on the 13-inch MacBook Pro, where with the Air, you really want to keep it at 1366 by 768 and all effects off. So if some light gaming is on the menu for you, I would also go with the 13-inch MacBook Pro. So this isn't the SmackDown really where I say, hey, look who the winner is. You know, either way, Apple's going to win with this one, aren't they? Uh, but clearly the machines... They each have their plus and minuses. The MacBook Air is going to be for somebody who needs the most affordable machine possible and also the lightest. But for those of you who are really tempted by that higher quality display or that stronger performance that you get from the full MacBook Pro, for $200 more and a half a pound more, you get quite a machine. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website to read both of these reviews, watch our video reviews on our YouTube channel, and hit that like button.